What is the ASA? I'm glad you asked. You're in the right place. We're going to spend a few minutes right now identifying what exactly is an adaptive security appliance and point out some of its important features. Let's jump in. An ASA stands for Adaptive Security Appliance, and it's a multi-purpose firewall from Cisco. To make sure we can appreciate the bells and whistles it has, let's take a look at the approach that the ASA takes to security for this network. We know, if this is the ASA, that the outside world is a dangerous place. And as a result, the ASA by default says any traffic trying to come in from the outside, let's say a user or a server or a system, it's going to be denied right there. We're going to stop it. No traffic allowed from the outside as it tries to make it to our inside or to our demilitarized zone. That's the default attitude. It also has an amazing feature called stateful inspection. So let's say we have a user right here. And that user is Bob. And Bob wants to go out to the internet. So Bob makes his request. The traffic goes out to the internet. Maybe he's going to cbtnuggets.com. Well, when a user goes out to a cbtnuggets.com, what are they expecting? I know, some great training. They're also expecting a reply. They're expecting a response back. So when the reply comes back, I'll put this in a green color. When the reply comes back, this firewall is going to have done something amazing. What this firewall did in the background it looked at Bob's session as it went out to the internet. It remembered. It remembered the things like the source IP address and the destination IP address and the layer four information, the ports involved, and it put that into a session table, a stateful session table. So then the reply came back. The firewall said, wait a second, this reply is perfect. It exactly matches what Bob's expecting as a reply, and it dynamically makes an exception and lets that return traffic come back in. That way we can have tens of thousands of users all going out to the internet, dynamically allowing all the return traffic, and at the same time, we're stopping any traffic that's initiated on the outside from coming in. That, my friends, is a very amazing feature called stateful inspection that the ASA does terrifically well. Well, what about legitimate users on the internet? So we have a user out here that wants to go and hit our web server. Unfortunately, the traffic's not going to be allowed there. Have no fear. We have packet filtering functionality where we can create an access list, apply it to this interface and say, please allow traffic if it's web traffic destined to the IP address associated with that web server and go ahead and allow just that traffic. We're making exceptions with it. So the user could then go ahead and access the web server, but nothing more. And at the same time, we're never allowing the user's access from the outside to the inside. That's a no-no from a zone perspective with firewalls. So packet filtering, and ACLs are synonymous as far as how, what they do on the network. Another feature is that customers are going to be using the 10 network, for example, 10.0.0. In fact, if you look at your IP address right now on your computer with IP config on Windows or IF config on Linux or Mac, it's very likely that you have a 10 address or a 192 to 168 something. Those addresses are in the RFC 1918. I can spell that, 1918, address space. They're private. They're not allowed on the internet. Service providers block them. So we're also going to have NAT and PAT, which is simply lying. It's lying about our source IP addresses. So if the firewall has a good address like 23.1.2.3, some globally routable address, he can go ahead and use NAT or PAT to translate the source addresses of these PCs into the address he has as he ships them off on the network. The reply traffic, when it comes back, it would be untranslated as well. Another really amazing feature that is supported by the ASA is VPN support for SSL or IPsec or both. So how would that apply? So James is connected to the internet, and he needs to connect to corporate headquarters. He has high-speed connectivity with DSL or cable. I mean, maybe he's at a coffee shop or Starbucks, what have you. And if he wants to connect to the corporate headquarters to get some data, he doesn't want to do it in plain text on the internet because it's dangerous. If we're saying plain text, if it's confidential or sensitive information, that information may be leaked out and somebody may see it who shouldn't. So we build a VPN tunnel from James Machine with a remote access VPN to the firewall so that this leg of our journey is protected. With either SSL or IPsec, they both do a terrific job, and then he can access the internal resources just as if he was on the local area network. So here's what a 
ASA looks like. This is actually the baby bear of the family, the 5505. All the other models are 19-inch rack-mountable, bigger devices. And this device, which is awesome, has a built-in 8-port switch built into it. Port 0 on the far right, all the way through 7. And these last two over here support power over Ethernet. So if you had a, a camera or an access point that needed to be powered with power over Ethernet, it would support it. And the other cool thing is this. With this model, you have virtual interfaces. So we create these logical interfaces for the inside, one for the outside, one for the DMZ, and each of those interfaces corresponds to a various, a various VLAN. So we can assign these ports to the appropriate VLAN based on what interface we want them to be associated with, and it makes it very customizable and easy to work with. Let me give you a sneak peek at what the graphical user interface looks like. Now for some, some people just love the command line interface. Other people love the graphical user interface. I think they both have their place. From the GUI perspective, there are some amazing time-saving tools that we can use. Of course, we can configure all the individual details, but let's say we need to roll out something like AnyConnect, the SSL VPN support for remote access. To configure that manually at the CLI, very doable, not a problem. However, if we want to do the same config but do a little quicker, there's a wizard for it. So we can go to wizard and, for example, any connect VPN wizard, it's going to ask us some questions. We put in the answers and it puts the config in for us. The other thing, too, we could use this wizard for is we could put all the information in, go right up to the end, but not apply it. We could look at the config, take it, put it in Notepad, edit it, and then we could put it in the, at the command line the way we wanted to. In this micro nugget, we've identified what's an ASA and also pointed out some of its important features. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.